record will reflect the presence of counsel and the defendant. The jury is still um, on the lunch and recess. It took me a few more minutes. I spent my actually my entire lunch hour researching this issue. Um, I did read the case cited by Mr. Uh, Griffin for the to support his request to allow his witness, his expert witness, the defense expert witness, to observe the testimony of the state's ballistics expert. Um, and vice versa. And vice versa, yes. Good point, vice versa. And, and initially, I'll, I'll just say, I thought, well, is there any harm in this? I mean, I, 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 I did look at the rule again, and, um, and the case law in Arizona, as well, in, as well as a Ninth Circuit opinion I looked at as well. And let's see. We, uh, as I'm getting the language here in this case, Mr. in front of me, Mr. Uh, Griffin, I am assuming, but I don't want to assume incorrectly, that sorry, that you have interviewed the state's ballistics expert, have received the state's ballistics report. Um, on uh, the bullet in question with that, and, the, and the gun. Is, would that be a correct assumption on my part? All true. Okay. Um, so, let me get to that. So as um, we were discussing before the luncheon break, uh, Arizona Rules of Evidence, Rule 615, subsection C, does reference a person whose presence a party shows to be essential to presenting the party's claim or defense. <clears throat> Sorry, I should have printed up hard copies. I'm looking at my computer because I emailed the cases to myself from Westlaw. finds at this time, Mr. Griffin, that the defense has not established um, met its burden, so to speak, has not established and met its burden that um, the defense expert needs to listen to the state's expert that's not how I want to say it. So, because Rule 6, 615 subsection C states person whose presence a party shows to be essential to presenting the party's claim or defense. So at this time, the court finds that the defense has not established that it is essential to presenting the, um, a defense in the defendant's case that it should be allowed to have its ballistics expert listen to the testimony of the state's ballistics expert. If the state's ballistics expert testifies um, differently, um, or, or there's something that comes out in the state's witness's testimony, that um, I mean, I, what I want, what I'm trying to say is, the door could still be open to this, depending on how the state's expert testifies. But if the state's expert testifies consistent with what the defense already knows from having interviewed the defense, the state's expert, and 
having obtained the um, state's ballistics experts' reports, the court just does not find that it is essential to the defendants presenting a defense for the defense ballistics expert to listen to the state's ballistics expert. So that's the court's decision. All right, have we gotten the video? Video's working. Um, one other thing on this, uh, just we were playing around with the audio a little bit to see if you could hear it. it. It's okay, we brought in our own speakers. It wasn't great on the projector, but we printed out transcripts and they're redacted so it doesn't have the invocation in the transcript. We have enough for everybody in the courtroom, I mean the jury in the court, to talk to counsel about that. I, I would propose having the jury have those in hand while they're watching the video, they can follow along and then we would collect them after the, the video is presented. Mr. Griffin? Okay. All right. Um, can we make it clear to them that they don't get to keep them? Can you want me to do that? Well, or, or I can. You just tell, counsel, you tell me, and I'm asking both of you how you want me to handle that, because here's why. I don't want them to think they're going to get to keep them, and they can rely on it. Um, and, I, and I don't, you know, they, what if they make notes on it, and then they think they get to keep that. So. I think if the plan is that they're going to not get to keep the transcripts, that we let them know that up front. I agree, and I would ask the, the court to do that. Um, I think that, you know, there's an instruction, obviously, that the court gives that they can't have transcripts and have to rely on their own notes. So I, however the court wants to phrase that, but I agree, uh, we would collect them right after this video is being presented. So this is what I would propose. So let me see if you both agree or disagree that you're going to explain to them that you're handing out transcripts so they can follow along should they have any difficulty in hearing the audio on the video correct right. and um, then I could then at that point let the let the jury know that these um, transcripts are are being provided as a courtesy to you uh, to utilize if you wish while you observe the video and listen to the audio on the video, and they're going to be collected after um, the video is concluded. You don't get to keep them. That sounds fair. Is that okay? I agree. If you give that admission, can you hand out the transcript? Can you use your microphone? Sorry, because you got your mask on. I want to make sure I'm hearing it correctly. I agree with that, and I would ask that the court not only give that um, admonition, but that the court also pass out the transcripts. Oh, that the court pass them out. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. Um, and then I was talking to Brooke at the break to, I, I don't want to be confusing, and this is not normally an issue because this comes up a lot in trial uh, where we have to, an exhibit could be substituted, but my thought is this, uh, you still don't have it yet, do you? We're, the, we're still working on it. We've okay. tried a, a variety of methods and we're optimistic we'll have it by the end of the day. Okay, and of course what I'm referring to is the actual um, video on the disc that the jury will have in the deliberation room right. if they want if they want to if they ask for it and they want to look at it so and talking to Brooke what we'll do is I know you've marked this as 37 it's been now admitted as I think it's 30 yes 37 um, what I would suggest is that we'll get the other 37 we'll keep the original 37 that um, is not actually being shown to them today because you're playing it off your computer so you can stop at the appropriate part, correct? Where the invocation occurs. And we'll just make it, we'll make it very clear. I trust Brooke, she's got a lot of experience, as do I. We'll make sure that the 37 that's been marked and, admit, and admitted today does not go back to the jury, and the 37 that will go, but it'll stay in the court file. We're not gonna give it back to you. It's gonna just be part of the court's record. But um, what, will go back to the jury if they ask for it will be uh for lack of a better way to say it the correct version of 37 that is shown to them today all right i hope that's abundantly clear i hope all right anything further before we call for the jury no. all right. mr griffin no. all right we're gonna call for the jury
Good afternoon. The record will reflect the presence of counsel, the defendant, and the jury. Mr. Parker, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Before the break, I had moved to admit uh, Exhibit 37. I'm proposing we play that now. The computer issues are now resolved. All right. Thank you. And then, um, do you have transcripts? Right, folks, Mike, just wait just a moment so I can explain if you could, please. Thank you. So I spoke to counsel for both parties. And uh, while you watch the video and listen to the audio, uh, the we are providing you with transcripts of what you're listening to to help you follow along. But understand that as soon as the uh, video is concluded, we're going to take these transcripts back. You don't get to keep them. Um, and so I just wanted to make, make you aware of that. It's for you to utilize while you're listening and watching the video today and only for that purpose. So, all right, Mike's going to now hand them out to you. Yes, you may. If I may. Uh, Detective, have you reviewed uh, the transcript that we just handed out uh, this video interview? Not in its entirety. All right. Have you uh, reviewed portions of it and compared it against the video? No. Okay. I, I have done this with um, other videos and, and transcripts, for example, of my own interviews. So I've done that before. Is your understanding there may be some variation as to the transcript and what a listener may hear? Yes. That's all I have, Judge. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just. Transcript varies from what you actually um, hear. I, I'm asking you to rely on what you hear, what you hear on the video, in case there is some discrepancy in the transcript that you've been provided to just assist you as you follow along and listen to the audio and, and watch the audio, listen and watch the audio. Counsel, did you, anything further in that regard? No, thank you. But Judge, I know it's professionally prepared and things happen, so okay. I thank you. Thank you, all right. All right, may I play the video, Judge? Yes, you may. Thank you. This is exhibit 37, and I'm gonna push play now, but I do have some questions just at the start. Um, detective as we're playing it there is some text on there it says audio begins and then there's a countdown you see that yes all right and uh, this is what we might call a stitched video where you have different perspectives and the audio is then put together with the, the video is that right yes all right so if I understand correctly the audio won't begin until that countdown reaches zero correct that's correct all right so in that case, I'm going to fast forward a little bit so we don't have to sit here in silence for eight minutes. Can I ask a question, Mr. Barker? You're going to get the volume up, correct? Yes, there's no audio yet. No, I understand. Okay. But you're going to get the audio up. So while you're doing this, I just thought it might be a good reminder to the jury. If, you, if anyone is, has trouble hearing the audio portion of the video at any time get my attention you're going to see i'm going to be watching you like i always do but it's really important that you all hear so if anyone cannot hear you let us know thank you um, i'm going to push play in one second we're about 15 seconds away from the audio um, there will be portions detective can you explain uh the body camera situation again and and how that may interact here 
Yes, so I explained earlier that we had an issue with the interview room where the cameras were not recording audio. I wore a body-worn camera for the purpose of recording the audio, but it's facing maybe the wall or the table or something like that, so it doesn't show the defendant. But just so that you understand, that's on this video, and the purpose of it was to record audio. And the person that we're seeing now is who? That is Mark Gooch. I'm pushing play now again. Okay. All right. Let me start that over. Sorry about that. Nothing's easy. There we go. Thank you. 
And so you said you were a mechanic before? Yes, sir. And what was that back in Wisconsin? Yes. Tell me about life back then. You're not too old, right? 21, so you're pretty young. So what did you do before I worked on? I worked on a decent guy job.
it's pretty difficult, difficult heights just to stay up. That makes sense. You didn't paint in the Air Force, you got to save that, right? You ever like, go to the gym and stuff here? No, man, I didn't like it. Oh, okay. It's like my normal. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't it kind of like a ghost town? So what do you do on your time off? Um, what my computers? Um, you know, I can watch the boss or enjoy the things, try to stay active. Do you like go to church or anything like that? Uh, no, we have church close to. Oh, that's close to? Uh, Is that something that you did before it closed? Yes, ma'am. Smartphone. That's correct. So tell me about that. What, as far as why I want to? I'm just curious. 
a certain way you have to dress and stuff? That's correct. Okay. So,
about that. You were traveling then? Yeah. I'm a little confused because at first you said you had in trouble, but now did you go to New Mexico? Okay, cool. So let's clarify that. So when did you go?
So what type of vowel would you need here in the Air Force Base? Uh, probably like fairly early in the morning. What time do you stay out of here? I don't I'd have to go grab my I got like the charts. Hey, what time? Well let's again, let's go for the day. So when you say fairly early, what does that mean to you? Uh probably about seven. Stopped in Flagstaff for a while. Just got some, uh, just stopped, got some fuel. Where'd you stop at? I'd have to check, I'd have to check. Alright, you probably use like a, did you use like a debit card or something? Uh, yes, we have a credit card. So you'd be able to probably show me where you went yes, that way? Yes, okay. I can show you that I found up in Flagstaff, I believe it was. Anybody while you were there? No. 
friend, your friend called you, said you want to go hide tomorrow, and then you thought that you had headed back that way. Or I'm sorry, after that. Which way did you take back?
So when you actually drove to the church, uh, where, because that's a compound there. Um, obviously, I'm working this case. I'm pretty familiar with the area right now. It's, it's what they call compound. Um, so it's like, Why do they call it that? I don't know. Well, I can tell you what I mean is, remember how Erner asked you if the church is here, they're just like a standalone building or do people live around it? And I know the one in Farmington, people live there. Oh, yeah. So, well, that's, we're working on it, obviously. So, um, you drove, you said to like a, a board and checked for times, like where exactly did you drive when you were at the church? In that area, that general so, area. So when you come up, um, at a Hart Road and a Dirt Road church. You come up around that church, so the building on the left and the church on the right. Uh, what, tell me what they looked like. Maybe we can picture the same thing. Remember what, like, what the church looked like? It was just the standard. Uh, like, okay. Their churches are very similar. Okay. Our so where did you go then? And I went up uh, past the church, and that's where I saw the man.
punishment? What's the punishment, or is there one? Right, Detective, so there's a, a, a break here uh, where the audio is counting down again. And during this section, there's no audio in the interview room. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. I'm going to fast forward through this to where it starts up again. And at some point during this break, he was allowed to use the restroom. Is that right? Yes. It's counting down now to uh, audio once again.
You use the restroom, right? Yes, ma'am.
Uh, no, ma'am. Brother, sisters, family, did you need to tell anyone that you're planning to check out the front of the church? No, ma'am. So it sounds like you're you're not really the kind of guy to talk on the phone very much. No. Do you text a lot? I text just again. It's like how do you doing today? Yeah. I I just ask that because I feel like in our day, you know, our generation, it's like most people don't talk on the phone very much anymore. So you probably text a lot more than you talk on the phone. Is that fair to say? Uh, probably. Okay. Um, but your like your brothers and stuff, you talk with them every couple of weeks on the phone. Is this like a, a they be like long conversations or just a quick checking in or how does that go? Usually just call just to check out and we have a question about the son of brother. Alright. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because you're a mechanic. Yeah, got it. Alright, so January 18th. Um, what time did you leave your door there? Do you have any time? So, uh, what I can remember was around seven. Whether or not that's, that was factual, I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. And like I said, I just want you to tell me the best of your to your memory. Understood. As long as you're not lying to me, then we don't have issues. <laughs> not, most people don't remember every mini of their day. Okay. That's that's just, reasonable. Just another day on the job. Okay. So you think you left around seven a.m.? Yes. I'm just gonna write all this out because I don't have any questions. Um. And you drove your Jetta. You've already established that. You were by yourself, you said earlier? Correct. Right. Okay. Do you think you stopped anywhere on the way out from your door? Like, I do want a base.
there's basically the main road that ends up driving just north up to where you could go to New Mexico. Did you stay on that main highway the whole time? Yes, sir. You never went on any side streets? No, I just have a fuel for the truck. During that trip, whether it was to there or back, did you ever stop and like check out any tourist things or no, I stop? Was trying to make it back. So you continued up to New Mexico, or over to New Mexico, and then what? What was the next thing you remember? I believe I stopped for food at McDonald's. Okay. From what I can remember, I don't remember the town. It was entirely town.
like, what's the latest you think you possibly came through that game? Um, probably it would have been one or two. Maybe not one or two was from. So, you know why I'm here. I told you the case that I'm working. Um, I'm just going to ask you straight. Were you involved with Sasha Krause's homicide? Did you have done Sasha Krause? Did you know somebody? Did you know anything about her? Okay, they don't have 
turn straight, I'll just drive straight back. Because you wanted to get back for your hike the next morning. But then you end up coming through Luke Air Force Base at up seven. So that's what I'm trying to figure out here.
right, that's the end of Exhibit 37. Uh, that would conclude the interview. Is that your uh, recollection, Detective? Yes, it is. Just to let you know, I'm planning on taking, uh, giving the jury, I should say, and giving the jury primarily a break in about six minutes because we'll be having going an hour and a half. That's fine. Thank you. That interview. We just have one moment to. Pull up my notes here. So there were a few things, and you mentioned this in the interview, inconsistencies. Uh, let me ask you about some of those. He mentioned in that interview that he attends church quite a bit. Anything you found in this investigation that would corroborate that statement? I found nothing during the investigation that cooperated. He thought he went to church often. Did you talk to the pastors at the Trinity Church and the Sunny Slope Church, the Mennonite churches in Glendale and Scottsdale? Yes, I did. Did they know who Mark Gooch was? Objection. Any indication that he had been to those churches? I'm sorry. I, I Same objection. Okay, I need you near the microphone to I'm make sorry. sure I can hear you. Same objection. Thank you. All right. Um, sustained. Did you have to do any follow-up with those churches to, to find out if he had been there? Yes, and, and I think you just said that they were in Scottsdale. So the Trinity Mennonite Church and the, Men and the uh, Sunny Slope Mennonite Church, they're not in Scottsdale. They're the ones that Mark was doing surveillance on on January 12th, which are in the Peoria, Glendale, Phoenix area. All right. A any indication he had been to those churches? No objection. I'm not asking what was said. I'm asking if there's any indication, Judge. Same calls for the same speculation and same hearsay information. Say the court sustains the objection. After you would talk to those uh, two pastors, um, was there anything else that you did to confirm if he had been there? Let me ask it a different way. Was there anything in those conversations that led you to an additional step to confirm if he had been there? Same objection. It's an effect on the hearer, Judge. I'm sorry, can you ask the question again? After you talked to those two pastors, was there anything else that you did in addition to confirm if he had been there? I looked through his phone quite a bit and did not see any evidence that he actually attended those churches. All right. He said in the interview that, uh, and this is a quote, I was hoping that ski resort was still open, but they were closed due to coronavirus starting up. This was a conversation you were having, obviously, in, in April of 2020. Is that right? Yes. Um, the date you were talking about was January 18, 2020, right? Yes. Uh, when did COVID restrictions actually begin? Do you mean at Snowball? Objection. The ski resort. Foundation. Thank you. Sustained. Do you know when the COVID restrictions occurred at the ski resort, Snowball? Yes, I do. The middle of March. All right. That was a month or so after this January 18th trip, correct? About two months. Was it, have you been able to confirm whether it was closed in January at all? I don't know if it had to close at any other time in January, but I did confirm the ski resort was open January 18th of 2020. All right. He said he left uh, his dorm around 7 a.m. on January 18th. Uh, what did the investigation actually show? Our investigation showed that per the security footage, he left his dorm room in his vehicle at about 8.30 that morning and the first Nilos location hit off of the base was at about 9.04 that morning. All right. He, he also mentioned in the interview that you asked him if he had driven anywhere outside of Arizona in the last six months. 
It, what was his response on that? He told me no. All right. He said he had driven down maybe through uh, from Wisconsin, but not outside Arizona, right? Right. When he, when he originally moved to Luke Air Force Base, he drove from Wisconsin to Glendale. And uh, what did the investigation actually show? The investigation showed that he had gone to New Mexico on January 18th. And to be fair, he admitted that later in the interview, right? He did. Now, at the beginning of the interview, uh, you mentioned something about a license plate scanner. Uh, is there such a thing that you had in your possession? We utilized them, but they were not utilized in this case. Um, it, was there a period of time in this interview where you were feigning ignorance that you perhaps didn't know everything? Yes. And what was the purpose for that? The purpose was that I simply wasn't going to just start off the interview by telling him everything I knew. But I did want to indicate to him that I knew he had been in New Mexico. All right. Um, and at this point, to be fair, he was already a murder sus suspect, right? Yes. Um, you had the intention at some point, even that day, to arrest him? Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. Um, but your interactions with him at the beginning were very cordial. What, can you explain to the jury why that was? Well, I think that I'm always cordial with people. Okay. And I didn't have a reason not to be cordial with him. Um, Mr. Barker, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but it's, it's been an hour and a half, and I'd really like to give the jury a break. I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. Well, as court staff and everyone else. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to take our afternoon recess. It'll be 15 minutes, and then we'll call for you. Um, remember the admonition. Do not talk to anyone about the case. Do not let anyone talk to you about it. That includes each other. Keep an open mind, and please do not form any opinions about the case. Um, I think one juror, the council doesn't know this, but I know I got a note right before I took the bench, uh, right before we brought you in, in the afternoon. And I believe someone's got an eye appointment at four o'clock. So I just uh, wanna find out, can, can we go till 345 or do we need to stop sooner than that? Oh, oh. Okay, so if we stop right at four, is that enough time for you to get your things and go, or do you need? Do we need to stop a little earlier than that? Okay, I'll make sure we do it. Thank you. All right, we stand in recess. Please be seated. Record will reflect the pre uh, that uh, counsel. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tired. Uh, the record will reflect that the jury has been excused for the afternoon recess. Um, and detective, if you wish to step down, you can for this break. Counsel, anything further before we take our recess? Nope. All right. Thank you. We stand in recess. Fifteen minutes.